Welcome to the Addiction Connection Podcast, connecting hope the gospel of our addiction. I'm Mark Shaw. This is Jim Quigley of Freedom Farm Ministries. He is a multi-talented dude. Multi-talented dude. All right. Multi, multi-talented. Multi. All right. Would you like to juggle or sing or show off one of your multi, one of the talents of your multi? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. <laughs> That's a good call. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. overshadow the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't. We we uh on this one, I really wanted to focus in on Freedom Farm. Mm. Um, you guys are in Boone, North Carolina, recently impacted, affected by. Uh, the Hurricane Helene mm -hmm. that kind of came through our, my area, through Florida, hit us. We lost power for maybe 16 hours, something like that, at our house, which which was tough. I mean, you know, you you rely on rely on uh, power and you know so much with internet and all this stuff, and so we mm -hmm. were forced to look at each other and talk. It was it was it was very difficult. No. <laughs> I'm I'm being a little. I mean, some some people really were impacted. And that's and I know you guys were. So I really want to get to the serious side of this. Before I do that, let me read Second Corinthians one verses starting in verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction mm. with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. So with uh, Hurricane Helene kind of going through Florida and up in Georgia and then into North Carolina, what were some of the impacts you saw in the area in general and then also at Freedom Farm? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's interesting. I'm, uh, I'm from South Florida, which is hurricane alley. And I grew up, uh, with hurricanes. So I've yeah. experienced lots of hurricanes, but I've never experienced a hurricane like this. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the, when it hit, I, it took, I, I think it took everybody by surprise about, uh, the amount of rain that, that, uh, we were saturated with. Um, uh, we lost power, uh, the morning of the storm and, uh, at my house and we didn't regain it for about 11 days. So we were out without Whoa. power for 11 days, which there are still people without power now in the, in the, up here, um, over a month later. But, um, the, the first couple days, uh, uh, without power. So that was Friday. The storm hit Saturday and Sunday. We, we kind of just, uh, we're at the house and we're, you know, my hat where my house is, uh, specifically there wasn't, um, uh, a lot of damage. A tree did fall and hit my power line in the front yard along the road. But, um, uh, and so, but there was no flooding damage in my area. But I was hearing, I started hearing reports about things being bad. And, you know, I was checking in with my staff and and whatnot. And Sunday, we were hearing once a day from our guys in this one area, um, which is our phase one house. And uh, I, so, that Sunday, I just, I just felt ne it necessary for me to go and put my eyes on them. We've been hearing reports that they were okay. They, they had food. Uh, a neighbor had a generator. And... Uh, they were making it fine, but I just, I wanted to go and see it for myself. And, uh, so I went off on an adventure on Sunday afternoon and I got to tell you, um, that's when it finally hit me how bad this thing was. Um, it's usually a 30 minute ride for me to go to where that house is. Um, uh, it took me over four hours to make it there. Um, I tried to try, I had to try multiple, um, uh, different, different ways of getting there. And I would constantly get about six miles from the house and be turned around and have to go and start, start over again from another direction. Um, it was, it was the, the damage that I was driving through was unbelievable roads that had been washed out. And the one I finally was able to pass on someone had just put rock and patched 
patch the road, like just whole parts of asphalt gone. And someone had dumped enough rock in areas so that you could drive a car over it, uh, driving over power lines and actually going underneath power lines that were hitting the top of my car um, just to get 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 places. And, you know, most of the most of the roads there are along waterways. So you're seeing just this devastation um, with the waterways. Um, uh you know, eat people's whole houses down in, down in riverbeds, cars. Um, it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, praise God, none of the houses that we had men living in were damaged. We were, we were without power and it was inconvenient. Um, but we, uh, we, we did not, we didn't have any damage. We did, we did sustain damage at our thrift store pop property, which is a multi-purpose piece of property. We have all our firewood that we process and sell is there. Um, and then obviously we have the thrift store inventory that covers about 6,000 square feet. And we had two garages, one that had uh, auto shop equipment, lift and all that type of thing. And then another garage that had all our, uh, our, our uh, landscaping equipment equipment and um there was at the worst of it about 18 inches of of mud in in some of those buildings and uh you know when you have equipment that's laying in 18 inches of this really fine mud that comes from like the silt of the bottom of a creek bed um uh, that just ruins anything that has an engine that was sitting in it so we 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 had a tremendous loss as far as equipment and inventory over at the thrift store. It took us about over a week to clean out um with uh with the men coming being able to come in and uh with shovels and and pressure cleaners and tractors and um dump trailers we we were able to get it cleaned up and um that took about a week and then we started praying um for inventory and the lord showed up and he, he filled up our six thousand square feet within a week um oh. it, yeah it's unbelievable it was unbelievable um we it was almost like we 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 didn't skip a beat as far as the the mm -hmm. thrift store goes even though we were basically closed for two weeks many of our men obviously had family members that were really struggling with you know their loved one being up here in the in the in this and worried about them and they were giving our guys options, uh, options to, uh, to, uh, um, go home or, you know, go somewhere else. And, um, and, uh, nobody, nobody followed through with that. Uh, everybody stuck it out. Uh, we still mm -hmm. have all the same guys still here. They, they went through it. And even though they had a way to leave, they, they felt it important. Uh, I think a lot of them felt blessed that, uh, we didn't receive damage like a lot of other people. And there was a lot of opportunity to help. And, uh, and these guys actually asked if they could volunteer, um, and do some, do some, uh, help with people in the community. And we said, yes. And we allowed mm -hmm. them to do, uh, some of that. Um, our, 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 uh, supporters came out and really helped us. We got tremendous amount of donations and just text messages and emails and then, um, I, I, I don't know if, uh, you remember this, but we, we live, uh, in Boone, North Carolina, where our program is the, they have the, uh, central, uh, or the international campus of Samaritan's purse. And everybody knows Samaritan's purse is the big disaster Christian disaster relief. So, right. so Samaritan's purse actually set up their command center at the church that we attend, oh. um, because a lot of the. A lot of the Graham family goes to our church, and mm -hmm. um, so they 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 took over our campus, which is, you know, it's a church of about fifteen hundred people on a Sunday. Our guys got to experience um, the mass amounts of people, mass amounts of people coming out to uh, to help us. Um, mm. They would they would drive by every day and say, "We're making lunch. How many meals do you need?" and we would tell them 15 or 20 and they would bring 40, <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> would have seconds and, uh, yeah. just all the, you know, all the, all the donations of, you know, uh, just 
food and water and um, people coming over and saying, can we help you out with this cleaning up? And it, it really, I think, inspired a lot of people that this was a special place. They got to see the church in action, um, people helping each other out in Christ's name. And that was just, was, that was, that was great to, to be a part of. Um, we all, we all lived on generator power for a couple of weeks. Um, it was even at my own house, uh, we ended up finally getting one on Monday. So we'd been without power for about three days. And, uh, and, uh, we, we essentially, it was like, it was like glamping. If you know what glamping is glamorous camping, you know, um, yeah. you know, there was, there was just some extra responsibility of getting fuel every day for your generators and, but uh, we were able to, you know, get by fine. But over, over and all, oh, and this is another thing, um, you know, in God's providence. So Freedom Farm um, uh, has regular insurance like, like uh, anybody would have. But everybody knows that flood insurance is not included in your basic insurance. That's a special mm -hmm. kind of insurance that is usually very expensive to obtain. But that thrift store property when we bought it, we, we do have a mortgage on it. It's in a floodplain. So we were required to carry flood insurance. Oh, wow. So <laughs> the one property that we needed flood insurance on, um, we had it. So wow. we, we haven't seen the results of that yet. Uh, I'm still waiting, yeah. but, but, um, but what a blessing, you know? Wow. Yeah. Huh. It's almost, almost like God's sovereign. Yeah. Um, no, he's sovereign. I'm just kidding. Man, wow. So you guys, you know, that's why I picked those verses. The Second Corinthians 1, you know, the Father of mercies, God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, every kind of affliction, addiction, uh, hurricane issues, um, everything. And then it says, so that, so here's why he comforts us, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in, in, in any affliction and yeah. uh, with the comfort with, with, with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So that's, you just gave a picture of that um, played out. It was, yeah, we actually, that's what we experienced. I, I was real encouraged when you read that at the beginning of this podcast, because that, that's exactly what we experienced. We had all these people... You know, have you ever seen Samaritan's Purse? They, yeah. They all have these orange orange and those shirts with the white lettering, the bright orange. So it was like an army of orange shirts, you know, everything yeah. being dispersed out into the communities and stopping by and bringing <laughs> things. And these were all people that that wanted to bring comfort and bring encouragement. You know, that's that's what they were doing it for. And yeah. Uh, and then once once some of our guys experienced that, they wanted to pass it on and go help other people themselves. And yeah, it was just really wonderful. That is, I've got somebody I've been counseling and they um, they said, I'm just dying to share this with other people now. I, I want to, you know, just brand new in the counseling. But it's fun when like the guys there in the program are getting a taste of man, I want to, I want to give back. I want to serve. I want to, you know, it's per, it goes to purpose. And I think that's why the 12 step program has been as successful as it has been, because the emphasis is that 12th step is take the message, help other people, you know, of course they're misguided on the message and, and some of that, but still the principle is you got to help other people, got to serve other people. And I think that's, that's a highly, biblical message of hey we got to go make disciples we got to go help other people and and we read that there in second corinthians one about comfort so um yeah that's that's exciting jim that's a really good report and i know you know the when did the hurricane come through do you remember when the it was late september i believe uh so we're catching you in november where it's a couple of yeah i think it was later. the september 27th and your family, you guys, um, you guys have some new addition to your family. Yeah, yeah. My personal, uh, my family, my wife. Uh, um, for those who don't know, my wife uh, is from the Philippines. She, she actually immigrated here to marry me, <laughs> and 
Um, we've been we've been together eleven years and have two kids. And uh, a couple of years ago, we started the process of uh, applying for her parents to be able to come here on green cards, you know, resident uh, permanent resident visas. And uh, so we finally uh, came to the end of that, and they are here now, living with us uh, here in Boone. And uh, we are enjoying having um, uh, them at our house. So, oh, I bet, yeah. Did they arrive right after the hurricane, or what did you say? No, no, no. They arrived before it, and it was a, an ongoing joke. I was telling them that uh, <laughs> um, they had to come to the United States to flush toilets with five-gallon buckets of water and uh, live without power, right? <laughs> Cook on camping well, stoves and stuff. <laughs> Welcome to the United States. Yeah. America, yeah. Well, it, it's... Um, it's great. Great. What a great report. And um, just really need how God provides and care, loving care and concern for his people there and um, in all of life. And for those guys, I just love it. Love it. Love what you're doing. How can we pray and help Freedom Farm? So our biggest prayer need is, uh, first off, uh, just for receptive hearts for the men that are brought here you know it's mm -hmm. there's a lot of hard-heartedness and um the only thing to break through is 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 the holy spirit so just continued prayers for that and uh we have a uh, capital campaign that hasn't been officially announced yet but we have a designed campus that would make our program it would just bring it all to the next level all our housing and all our all our buildings and we'd be able to sell the the old outdated things that are in need of a lot of repair and move into a centralized campus um it comes with a hefty price tag but um you know nothing's impossible for the lord but if anybody can you know think about praying for us to be able to raise raise the funds necessary to move forward with the project we've already gotten a third of the money that we need so wow. we're lacking two thirds so yeah Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I encourage anybody watching to to give, especially toward the end of the year, just to support you guys and to to uh, help this project. I mean, it'd be great for you guys to to have some renovations and some new new things. Um, you've been sure. good stewards of everything you've had. I'm grateful for you, Jim. Thankful um for uh your ministry there and um I'm looking forward to seeing what God does. It's just really neat. It's always something new and exciting with what you guys are doing there and and it's it's to glory all, all glory to God. That's yeah. the bottom line. Well good. Well thanks everybody for tuning in. Wanted you to get a Freedom Farm update because they were right in the middle of this hurricane like Jim said, very devastating in that area and um and devastated their program but the nice thing is god is redemptive so we'll end on that he takes bad situations and turns them into good especially for his children and so thanks jim we'll see you on the next one take care and god bless good to see you